Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're bringing you guys another top five video and there's about two weeks left in season five. Battle Pass ends in two weeks, so obviously that's when the season's gonna end. I'm gonna tell you guys the top five guns that you need to be using in Warzone right now, whether it's gonna be an AR, submachine gun, shotgun. The meta is kind of crazy right now. It's actually really balanced right now, but there is a few guns that really stand out and I'm gonna go over all these with you guys. Top five, let's jump into it. Oh, and if you guys do like these top five videos, make sure you are subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and comment below what you guys think your top five weapons are because everyone has an opinion. I'm just gonna break down what I think works for me and aggressive high kill gameplay. So let's jump into it. Alrighty guys, so coming in at number five, we have the Finn. The Finn is a gun that was released about a month ago now, and everyone was trying all these different things on it with like the adverse barrels and all this stuff. But man, I'm telling you, if you put this build on specifically, this one right here, oh my God, guys, it literally doesn't move. Zero kick, gives the same punch as like a Bruin, and the fire rate's actually faster than the Bruin, I believe. It is insane, and I can't say enough about this gun. I personally tried not to use it like a ton on my stream because I think it's so, so, so good. I don't want to have a Finn gameplay for you guys on the stream every other day. It's low key coming in at number five because I think, honestly, there's not a lot of disadvantages to it. It's a light machine gun. And it, when I say it, it's actually a light machine gun because it feels like an AR. Like it doesn't feel clunky. The aim down sight speed feels good. I mean, it could be higher on this list, I'm going to be honest, but there's a couple other guns that have snuck up the list that overtake this gun. So coming in at number five, we have the Finn. And coming in at number four today, guys, we have the Amax. So the Amax came out mid-season three or mid-season, at start of season four, I believe, actually. And this gun like has just kind of gone under the radar a little bit and it's slowly working its way up. Like I tell my friends about this gun the other day and it is... They're like, oh my god, this gun's actually really good. I'm like, dude, that's why I've been using it. I mean, this gun right here is probably the highest, or should I say the fastest time to kill in the game from range. It has almost no fall off damage. It has a crazy headshot multiplier. And the body shot damage, I think, is actually the highest of any gun in the game. Especially because when I'm using it, there's sometimes I'm just hitting bodies and they die so fast. This gun is a damage machine. When you use this gun in Warzone, literally, like, your damage, you'll just be playing. You're like, oh, I got, like, 10 kills. And you're like, I got, like, 6K damage out of nowhere. This gun does crazy damage. And I think, personally... It's another one like this whole list of five guns. These guns are all extremely good. This could come in higher for most people. I'm not even kidding. If, especially if you're on a controller with aim assist, this is an absolute monster because it locks in for you. With a mouse and keyboard, the kick can be a little wild at times. But if you get that aim assist lock in with a controller, whew, there's a reason why Biffle uses this. If you guys don't know who Biffle is or Diaz, he plays with Nick Marks. This is his main gun and has kind of like brought it to the Warzone scene. It is a monster. Swear on it. A very good gun. Let's go on to number three. Alrighty, guys. And coming in at number three today, we have the M4. So the M4, you can put the Corvus barrel on it or the grenade or either one you want. I've been kind of messing around with both of them. But it is just a very, very good gun. It's been the, one of the best guns since the beginning of Warzone. And it's just so consistent at the short to medium range. And then even at long range, it's good. I mean, it is probably your... It's just like your Swiss Army knife. It's good at everything in this game, and you cannot go wrong with it. It's coming at number one on multiple of my lists before, and I have it at number three right now just because I think the meta has just changed recently, and the M4 is a monster. Don't get me wrong. It could be number one on the list again, but there's other guns like I'm going to throw in here like a side gun here for number three as well just because there's top five. It's hard to put five guns. I'm going to throw the MP5 in at that rank three as well. The MP5 is your go-to SMG. And I think the SMGs are so strong, especially the MP5. The MP5 is basically, I'm gonna be honest, it's your only option. It's been the best submachine gun since the beginning of the game. Super fast time to kill, especially in close quarters. The hit fire is ridiculous on it. I started using a controller the other day, just messing around. And if you have this gun out, you're not gonna lose a gunfight with a controller. You can kind of get a little wild with uh, the mouse every once in a while, but it's really good, guys. I that's why this also comes in at number three so it's kind of like a dual class here really good class can't go wrong with it Alrighty, guys so coming in at number two oh 
I hate to say this. I literally hate to say this. This shotgun right here. The R9. And you can even put the Origin there if you want. With these Dragon Breath rounds. Guys, there is an issue in this game right now. Shotguns are absolutely busted. I'm sure you guys are seeing it too. If you aren't running a shotgun, you're kind of like shooting yourself in the leg. Obviously, there's disadvantages of running shotguns in the medium range fights. But... If you're in a building and you have a shotgun, you're just not going to lose. They have these semi-automatic shotguns like the R9 and the Origin, which I have an Origin class here for you as well. They can almost, well, the Origin can 100% one-shot if you're, like, sticking the barrel in the person at one shots. I mean, it's a fully automatic shotgun. But both of these guns, usually, you're going to kill someone in two bullets. And it is actually ridiculous, and they need to be nerfed. Straight up, they need to be nerfed. They in my opinion, are kind of ruining Warzone right now. And I'm hoping to see some kind of nerf, obviously, because we did find out the other day that these guns are going to be in Call of Duty Warzone Black, or Black Ops Cold War when it transitions. So if they don't do something about these shotguns soon, there's going to be a major issue. So it is a very good gun. Unfortunately, we kind of have to deal with it right now. I They're just broken, guys. If you guys aren't running them, definitely try it out. That's why it comes in at number two. Probably could be number one, but I kind of hate these guns, so they're coming in at number two. So, let's go to number one, guys. And coming in at number one today, guys, we have the Kilo. Man, I, there's not enough I can say about this gun. It has just climbed up the ranks over time. I just think it is so, so, so consistent. You can do the VLK on it, or you can put the Hall graphic on it. I personally think if you have the Hall graphic unlocked with the blue dot, which takes a lot of time, and I'm planning on getting it here soon, um, that's probably the best class. I've picked them up a couple times off the ground, and it is crazy good. You see people like Swag running it with the blue dot. This is probably the most competitive gun in the game right now. It's just, it hasn't been touched at all. So that's why I think it's so good. All these other guns like the M4, they've all seen nerfs over time. The Kilo has not seen a single nerf since, I think, literally Call of Duty Modern Warfare came out. So, cannot go wrong with this gun. It is consistent at medium. Short range, it has a very high kill rate. Long range, it's super consistent. The recoil on the gun feels a little weird sometimes, but it's literally straight up and down. So you don't have to worry about any side-to-side -side movement on that. It is just so good, guys. I, I I can't say enough. It's probably your number one high. If you're going for high kills, this gun is a must go, in my opinion. Some people will say I'm leaving out a couple guns here, I'm sure, in the comments. But Kilo is number one right now, 100%. And that is my top five, guys. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. I know I, I'm doing these videos a little bit different. Sometimes there's gameplay. Sometimes there's not. I personally thought just coming in here, giving you guys a little breakdown. It's the end of the season. So, obviously, there's two weeks left. It's a great time to get into a game. These guns are going to do it for you right now, especially with that shotgun meta right now. The shotgun meta is not the greatest in my opinion, but if you want to jump on the train, it is super, super good. The uh, the one thing I do want to talk about here, guys, is going into the next season, season six, it's going to be the last season before Call of Duty Cold War happens, and I'm super excited because there's going to be new changes, all kinds of things going into a new season. I'll have another top five gun for video for you guys for season six, obviously, and uh let me know how you guys like these because I don't know. Do you guys just want me to get down to the nitty gritty like I did today? Just tell you like, hey, use these. You want to see gameplay with them? You want me to go down into multiplayer and just shoot the guns against walls to show you guys spray patterns and that kind of stuff? Let me know what you guys want. These videos are for you guys at the end of the day. And I really appreciate the support we do get on these. So that's top five. I appreciate y'all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.